Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. For this cover picture, I decided to go for high contrast mode. Uh, this vintage funny picture starts modern and pretty serious content. Let's answer the question, how do we build fast, reliable apps and making our users happy and have a good developer experience ourselves? To complete this mission, I'll share some best practices and tell about common pitfalls. My name is Maxim Salnikov. I live in Norway and uh, working on UIs from the future or UIs for the future for the company called Forjog. I'm Google Developer Expert and run some uh, meetups dedicated to web, mobile, and mix of web and mobile development. As well as, uh, as, well as uh, I'm uh, the organizer of a Mobile Era Conference, also dedicated to mobile and mobile web development. If you wish to chat with me about web tech, about uh, running developer communities and conferences, ping me on Twitter. Also, you will find this, uh, the link to this slide deck there. Okay, our today's hero is a service worker. What kind of animal is it? A pet or a wild one? Let's explore it a bit first, and uh, I assume that you have some basic knowledge about progressive web app concept already, so the reminder will be quite quick and mainly focused on my personal experiences. According to the current definition in Wikipedia, progressive web apps are just the apps using the latest browser APIs and uh, trying to take best from two quite different universes, web and mobile native. Uh, among these 10 classical characteristics of uh, progressive web apps, I'd emphasize connectivity independence and re-engagement possibilities because it's something totally new for the web. And it's all powered by Service Worker API. Speaking about APIs, uh, let's have a look on what we can use in uh, progressive web apps in uh, Service Worker and what we can't use. If you noticed, everything on the left uh, is asynchronous. It's based on uh, promises or events. We can also draw some uh, kind of conditional lines um, to, to group very approximately uh, these APIs, like the ones for storage, uh, the one for uh, performing HTTP requests, and a uh, group of APIs uh, to communicate with uh, our application itself. Uh, from the service worker, direct uh, reach to DOM is not possible, but we can always use messaging. So, uh, what could we implement using these uh, great APIs? Definitely, we can get some functionality of our application available in offline. For example, start the application itself and serve some uh, content we cached before, uh, as well as replaying the uh, HTTP requests our user performed during offline uh, after they get uh, online. Uh, also, we can quite seriously improve uh, online experience by just um, using some um, responses from cache instead of going to the network. But it's not only about networking. Also, our service worker is responsible for getting push events as well as displaying notifications. We can easily organize cross-client communications using service worker as a connection point and sooner later and hopefully quite soon, we'll be able to do job scheduling right in our, bro our browser and even respond to requests from other origins. We'll take these two last points in the last sections of this session. Uh, it's time to remind ourselves uh, how it looks. Here is your app, here is outer world and uh, our Animal, our service worker, is somewhere in between intercepting requests and serving uh, responses. And both app and service worker, they live in browser. And physically, service worker is just a JavaScript file. It's JavaScript code. Uh, so despite uh, both your application and service worker live in browser, they have quite different life cycles and work in totally different contexts. 
I will mention uh, some stages of service worker life cycle uh, throughout the session. So let's go through these stages uh, quickly for better understanding. After the registration of service worker, we'll cover this section very soon, uh, service worker file will be downloaded, parsed, installed. Um, in, uh, installation uh, event uh, will happen. Uh, we can get uh, one uh, by listening to install event. And then it uh, goes to waiting mode. Uh, waiting for what? for the previous service worker to be redundant. After this, activate event fired, so it's a good uh, time for us to clean up some leftovers from uh, previous service worker. Uh, I'm talking about uh, something stored in cache by previous service worker at the moment. And only then it becomes active and controls the page uh, or tab or clients, different names for, for the same entity. Um, when a new service worker comes to the game, our current one becomes redundant. Uh, and a couple of notices. Of course, the waiting stage is uh, making sense only in case uh, there was older pr service worker installed. If uh, this is um, a new one, like first run of our application, of course it will be bypassed. And during these two events, uh, something bad could happen, um, and then our service worker will be redundant, even not becoming active before. So we have to be careful with these two events, and we'll um, take some examples of um, possible errors a bit later. Good. So what's the current support status? I have a good and bad news. Let's start from bad. And um, it's not in production for all major browsers. So this blank slide symbolizes it. But there is a good news. If it's not in production, it's under active development. Uh, the level of expectation of service worker in Safari uh, from the developer community could be expressed uh, by the number of um, likes and retweets of um, this my uh, recent tweet that happened uh, one and a half months ago when uh, Apple uh, officially mm, like stated that yes, they go for service worker and it's in development now. It's the newest slide uh, in my slide deck. Actually, I edited it uh, yesterday uh, after Microsoft officially stated they go for service worker support as well, uh, but hidden by flag in this uh, autumn's release. Um, and actually, it gives us developers possibility to get prepared for full support of um, service worker functionality in Edge in 2018. So super short. Uh, Chrome and all Blink-based uh, Blink um, browsers uh, are in the game for quite a long time, as well as uh, Firefox. Microsoft Edge behind the flag this fall, and Safari under development. Uh, go back to PWA for a second. Let's have a look on the first word in this um, acronym. There are two meanings of uh, progressive, actually. First, it's uh, favoring progress, changes, etc., etc. Good, works for us. Or developing gradually. And I love the second one much uh, better. Um, it's exactly what's happening with service worker and its satellite APIs. Let me introduce the first hint for today. Think about progressive in context of progressive enhancement and go for the feature detection. We'll have some animals on my slides today. To allow the service worker to take uh, control uh, over our page, we have to register it first against corresponding origin, which is a unique combination of protocol, hostname, and port, and path. To not break up uh, our application in a browser and not having support for these APIs yet, we have to use this kind of check. I agree, the code is not so laconic with all these numerous checks, but this is how progressive enhancement works. PWA is a live standard uh, with more and more APIs and interfaces appear. Uh, this is why it's important to do all the checks, actually. Uh, this is an example of background sync. Uh, we go for this check uh, because for now it's available only in Chrome. 
also, some checks give us uh, possibility to tune up the UI correspondingly. For example, uh, we can use this check to show or hide some controls allowing our user to register for push notifications. Also, it makes sense sometimes to go even deeper and um, detect not uh, features, but say even sub-features, like, like the actions, for example. Uh, because based on this, we could um, update some interaction scenarios. Uh, good example, uh, availability of um, actions uh, in uh, push notifications. For example, in Chrome, we can go for this, and we can add some um, custom actions uh, maybe we could then mention some uh, calls for actions uh, in our messages. In Firefox, it's not supported yet, so we have to be careful with this and go for this check. And who knows how will it look in uh, Edge the next year. So bottom line, we have to actively use feature detection. We mentioned service worker should be registered by our page, but uh, what is the best time to do it? In short, the later, the better. Let's have a look at this uh, simple example. We detect the feature, and if yes, we go for this registration. It's on our, say, index HTML page. Uh, in a second, we will see a short movie called Service Worker, The Beginning. Uh, before we start some explanations, I created simple Angular app, uh, Angular 5 to be specific. Uh, and implemented simplest uh, handwritten service worker, which uh, is just trying to cache all the uh, application assets like HTML, JavaScript, uh, CSS, everything we have in the distribution folder for later um, offline experience. Um, let's go. We load our application, right? And, okay, service worker started it job, and it loads the same assets. You see the gear icon. Uh, it means that this request comes from service worker. And the problem is here. It competes with the loading of our main application. And it's awful that, for example, logo PNG is loaded after service worker finished its, uh, say, background job at all. So um, most likely, we implemented a kind of application shell for offline experience, but by doing this, we just ruined our first load experience, which is super crucial for modern web apps, and basically we count each millisecond. Uh, can we fix this? Luckily, yes. With just one simple wrapper, when we listen load event, we can implement totally different picture. Now our application is loaded. quite large non-optimized bundle, and only then service uh, worker takes its uh, like background job. It's important to remember, it's progressive enhancement. So uh, it's not, say, crucial for us if uh, something nasty will happen with service worker, if our main application is still working. Uh, so um, for the frameworks, it's recommended to go even further and um, implement this registration moment after framework itself uh, bootstrapped and uh, like render it the first view of application to not to compete um, with bandwidth and with CPU, which uh, could be quite uh, critical on uh, low performance devices. Just an example how it could be done in Angular. We'll just put the code from previous slide to this chain. So after all the general bootstrap. Okay, uh, we know everything, almost everything, okay, about uh, registration now. Let's talk about opposite flow, how to kill our service worker. Service workers uh, could be, yeah, sorry, some delays with slides. Yeah, service workers could be tricky. Uh, and um, Something like this could happen on your production application. For example, if you forgot to test it against some browser uh, or some specific browser version. And uh, it's not a uh, so rare case. We have to have a rescue plan. You remember that service worker don't like to give up. They wish to control uh, the page, the pages, all open tabs, um, until the next service worker will 
arrive. This is why it makes sense to have um, no op service worker ready somewhere in our distribution. So we could easily switch to this one if we need some time to understand what's happened and to fix uh, the real service worker. Uh, next. Um, even if we deployed a newer, fixed or no op version of service worker, mm, there is a chance that browser will not see this because it obeys uh, the regular HTTP caching rules. And I mentioned here HTTP caching, it's not the cache we use in service worker. Um, so regular rules with one exception, it will uh, check uh, for the new service worker after 20 uh, 24 hours, we'll take this a bit later. Definitely, we don't have, th have this privilege to wait for 24 hours. We have to fix this as well. Uh, another option is uh, just to unregister our service worker, but we not always can afford this. And I will explain why in a minute. Let's go point by point. No operational service worker. How it could look? As simple as this. So we need only uh, one main feature is to take control immediately after the installation. You remember, uh, on life cycle, we had this waiting stage, and we can bypass this stage by using skip waiting method. Okay, but if the bug is so serious, so you need uh, like um, immediately take control over all the pages and possibly refresh all the page, all the active tabs, you can go for this uh, dirty hack. Uh, straight from your service worker uh, inside activate event, you can iterate through open tabs and refresh them explicitly. If you have this um, uh, like privilege to scare your user with uh, unexpectedly reloaded page, sometimes it, uh, it's kind of useful to have. Uh, okay, uh, how to fix HTTP? caching of our service worker, possible caching, of course. First, uh, how browser uh, decides that service worker is updated? Super simple, it does uh, like uh, byte, 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 uh, byte, byte, byte checking. If uh, service worker is byte different, it considered to be new. Be careful, um, it's only valid for the main service worker file which we, which we register inside um, our application. It will not work with subcomponents we could import um, via import scripts uh, method. But um, again, um, browser can just uh, ignore your service worker because of HTTP cache. How could we fix this? Using regular tools, we can just uh, specify this max age header for the service worker. Um, quite uh, a job, and it requires um, some tune, tuning of our backend or our web server. Luckily, this will be changed and simplified soon. A uh, new specification is under consideration, which will um, ask browser never HTTP cache service worker. So we will. Um, no need this uh, server-side updates quite soon. Well, I mentioned unregister service worker from, uh, we can do it from our page, right? And the code is quite simple again. We just uh, iterate through service worker registrations and uh, apply unregister method. Looks simple and obvious, but the point is, this page where we do this uh, unregistration could be under control of this broken service worker. So basically, it could be, this page could be served from service worker cache, and um, there is a chance that user will not see this code uh, until old, like broken service worker is still um, controlling this page. So this is kind of a chicken and egg problem. Um, so what? Uh, have, uh, what do we have to keep in mind uh, in addition to, to what I mentioned? Um, there is no magic method um, telling uh, service worker to be updated immediately without any interaction from user side. You, you remember I mentioned 24 hours that service worker will be updated. Um, I met a lot of mis misunderstandings of this uh, uh, statement. Um, in, in different um, articles. Uh, it uh, will not be update updated automatically. Uh, any kind of 
action from user side needed, like navigation action, wh when user uh, loads or navigates to the page uh, which is under service worker control. What this 24 hours rule means is just if we, like by, um, by mistake, um, set max age for our service worker, like eternity, browser will ignore this and uh, on next user navigation action, if a uh, service worker is older than 24 hours, it will try to get it not from cache, but from the network. Okay, uh, we mentioned caching, caching, caching many times. Uh, in particular, uh, we mentioned the caching performed during service worker installation. Uh, when we basically take um, our assets uh, of our application, or well, as I mentioned, um, base, uh, the files we need to have um, in order to make our application run. Uh, and this way we create what we call application shell. Um, we can use it in offline to just start our application anyway, um, and we can optimize network experience. What could go wrong there? Actually, many things. And the rule is you have to trust your assets and you have to be careful with cleaning older ones. Let's check the simple example of our handmade service worker. We have an array of files we wish to ask service worker to put in cache for us. And uh, by mentioning cache, not explicitly mentioning HTTP cache, I mean, uh, I, I mean the one uh, which is um, relatively new for the browsers. It's uh, controlled by corresponding cache API, and this is storage for um, request response pairs. So this is like H not I, um, like a cache in intended to use for uh, resources, for HTTP um, responses. Uh, okay, we have this uh, array and we have this uh, super simple code on uh, installation event. Uh, you, you can see this uh, code in different variations in many, many um, tutorials, guides. We just um, open this cache storage and using method add all, just pass this uh, ar array of uh, URLs. It works like charm and uh, super simple. Uh, what if we have this non-existent HTML file? Like, for example, we had something before in our distribution and we deleted it, but for some reasons we forgot to remove it from, from this uh, explicit list. Following will happen. Um, our service worker will be failed to install just because of this file was not found. Uh, how that happened? Let's let's go back to this code. So um, add all will return false and wait until method will be rejected instead of resolved. Wait until is a, a simple method asking browser, please do not kill our service worker until we finish something inside this. Um, this handler in the inside this wait until and uh, since uh, wait until is rejected for us, whole service worker will not be installed. Uh, when it could happen? In case of HTTP error, like in our case, like uh, 404, no service worker for us. Also, if um, inside this wait until is happening something that takes a long time. Uh, service worker is a special kind of worker. It's event driven one. And in general, we don't have uh, full control on uh, the duration of um, its um, life, uh, lifetime. Uh, if a browser decides that oh, this guy runs for too long, it just kill it and uh, we will not uh, complete our action. Um, Different browsers uh, like uh, interpret this um, differently, but we have to keep, and keep it in mind. We cannot afford long running operations inside service worker. The next error is possible here is something uh, wrong with storage, with this um, cache API I mentioned, or with index DB. And um, storage is not unlimited. Uh, obviously, there are some limitations. There is a real nice usage chart landed in uh, latest Chrome, latest stable Chrome, um, Chrome 61. It's well uh, hidden uh, under DevTools uh, Applications Clear Storage uh, tab. And it shows the usage of um, our storage 
per origin. Um, the limits are different for different browsers, so they are quite approximate, I'd say. Uh, but uh, we have to remember that um, quotas are per origin, not per API. So it's kind of um, accumulated. If you wish to go in details before um, storing something, there are two uh, relatively new APIs for you to check your quota for corresponding browser in details. Um, so bottom line, check what you cache and do not forget to clean up after your service worker. And uh, yeah, the best uh, time to do this uh, cache cleaning is activate event. Okay, um, all we mentioned before uh, was uh, related to the case when we trying to grab and cache something from the same origin um, that our application has. Could we put something external to the cache? Uh, yes, we could, but we have to be ready for some special cases. We have three options. Um, if we have a full control on the um, CDN or remote storage or whatever we want to uh, use for uh, grabbing some resources from there, we can just set up course headers and everything work fine without any um, special like movements from our side. Otherwise, we have to handle so-called opaque responses. The most interesting option is to have separate service worker deliver it straight from these remote origins, but it's super experimental. Uh, we'll cover this in the last, um, last section. Uh, so the first option is simple. Third option is too experimental at the moment. Let's uh, go for the second one. Um, what are these opaque responses? What kind of limitations do they have? Uh, in simple words, uh, what is it? It's a no course cross origin request. Uh, we can send it and we can even uh, get some data. We can use this uh, data um, f as a source uh, for corresponding set of um, HTML tags. Um, but the problem is it's a total black box for our JavaScript. We cannot even get um, proper status of this. We don't even know um, succeeded it or failed. The status is always set to zero to this kind of requests. And this is why we can't use this nice uh, cache.all or cache.addall uh, methods where we just pass an uh, array, array of um, URLs. Because they expect uh, something started uh, from two as a status, uh, like regular um, status for an HTTP call, but it's zero. And obviously, these uh, methods will fail. Let's um, just try it. So just imagine, in, uh, in the same array of, uh, array of files we have, we want to ask our service worker to cache, we have some external resource, just image from a random, almost random website. Mm. Obviously, there are no course headers set for this. And the code is absolutely the same like we had before installation event. We just take this array and try to cache this. Predictably, putting the response to cache failed and um, in general, our service worker was not installed, uh, it's failed. How to fix this? Uh, here is the idea used uh, in Workbox library, library for uh, simplifying our life while working with um, PWAs. Um, what we do here? We just take the list of these um, requests. We know that they, they, they go to some external locations. And we fetch data manually using uh, mode no course. And only then we can put these uh, responses to cache. Uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, since status is always zero, we can't understand uh, was this request successful or not. So this is kind of uh, edge case. And if we go for this, we have to like maybe perform some extra checks. And in the Workbox library, I mentioned this strategy 
uh, th this method used for uh, only two uh, caching strategies, which are network first and stale while revalidate. Next, HTTP scenario, redirects. What to do uh, with redirects? Follow them or not? You remember this uh, screenshot of uh, one quite famous error I mentioned? Um, so now, fortunately, we know how to implement kill switch, right? And um, this error happened to quite many uh, websites uh, driven by service worker. Um, initially, they failed only in Firefox, and now, if not fixed, they will fail both in Firefox and Chrome. So let's try to understand what's uh, going on. Uh, let's go back to our sample, same array of files, uh, but now, uh, and, and same code to cache them. But now, uh, we have one uh, small uh, update on our backend. In my case, this is just simplest Node.js. Uh, we organize simplest and absolutely valid redirect, right? We use uh, 301 status and redirect from one page to another. Before testing this uh, case in our browser, let's refer to fetch method specification. And um, we'll notice the following line there, following point. Uh, if um, the network request will fail, if the um, redirect mode is not follow, and there are more than one URL in the list, which is the case for redirection, right? OK, let's still try this in our browser. Um, run our service worker, we see that uh, this redirected file is in uh, our cache list, which is a good sign, looks good. But if we try to open in browser this specific page, redirect from HTML, we'll see following. Obviously, for navigation request, which, is, which are like regular user action request, the redirect mode is manual instead of follow, right? Now, imagine that this is not our synthetic example, but uh, redirect, for example, from uh, slash to slash index HTML. And, um, yeah. and um, then you will understand what happened. Uh, so your website will just not work from the very beginning. Um, why it's happened? Um, because a new security restriction shipped with Chrome 59, as I remember, and um, even earlier, this security restriction was implemented in Firefox. It's actually the reason why this kind of error, corrupted content, mainly associated with Firefox. But as I mentioned, now the following code will fail in both uh, browsers. Uh, luckily, together with this restriction, um, developers uh, shipped a new flag, helping us to distinguish this kind of uh, uh, redirected responses. So we have uh, basically two solutions for this case. First, not, trying, not even trying to pre-cache this uh, kind of rules um, and clean this. Uh, let's go point by point. First, um, really, do we need to cache this possibly redirected um, URLs. Just imagine we have uh, the link to our dashboard somewhere in the uh, header of um, our website. And this is kind of protected area intended to be protected. And for non-logged user, it will lead to login form. And uh, in other case, it will uh, let user go to the dashboard, like, like admin console. Obviously, um, service worker, uh, if we somehow fix this uh, redirection anyway, service worker will go and cache login form. And um, even logged in user will never see the admin panel. So this is why I do not recommend to even try to cache something like this. But still, if we really need to do this, there is a method or workaround implemented in the same um, library I mentioned, uh, Workbox, and um, before it was implemented uh, in the like earlier version of Workbox called SW Precache. So what we do in this piece of code, we just check this flag if it's redirected. We go and apply clean response copy method. It's our custom method. What it does, it just takes from um, response the 
content we need and removes everything else before putting into the cache. So it kind of cleans the uh, response from all these uh, redirected properties, right? Of course, uh, you know, the whole restriction was implemented because of uh, security, you know, like bad website could uh, redirect to some uh, bad page, right? And user will never know this. Uh, this is why in uh, Workbox uh, it's hidden uh, behind clean redirects flag of settings and uh, it's false by default. So you have to explicitly uh, allow this uh, scenario. Oof, so many edge cases, right? Uh, so many things to care about. Uh, plus, caching or pre caching uh, quite often is not only a uh, feature we have to impl implement for our PWA, um, right? Are there any proper tools to help us with um, all these uh, operations? Yes, there are some great tools, and I want to, um, I, I want you to have a look at some of them. Uh, first, just a general statement about tools that could help you. Why could we go for uh, these external helpers? And I emphasize like proper tools, so be, be careful with selection. Um, first, we can write less utility code, right? Uh, and uh, quite often this utility code is very error prone. Um, next, uh, Proper developers of proper tools, they follow specification updates. You remember the case with uh, new security restriction in new version of Chrome. So if you, for some reason, uh, did not implement it, your users will see corrupted content error. But um, yes, some, quite often you just don't have a time to follow these um, changes, and uh, I'd say Service worker and the um, and um, like surrounding APIs are really live standards, so many changes uh, are happening uh, quite often. Uh, handling edge cases, you I, I listed just a couple of them. There are many more. You can you cannot even imagine, right? Uh, like many things can happen uh, with um, HTTP. Uh, if you are good kind of developer, uh, while using some um, helping libraries, most likely you will wonder how it's uh, implemented under the hood, right? Like the case I mentioned um, for this clean uh, response. Uh, you just uh, go to the code and check, wow, how did, how these guys uh, fix this? And uh, boom, you know one more interesting um, algorithm, uh, interesting scenario. And last but not least, you just have to complete your task, right? Y and uh, most likely you just don't have uh, resources to write uh, another super performant um, cache invalidation um, algorithm, right? Which is uh, the case for our caching scenarios. So let's name some tools. First, I want to I want you to notice that uh, all main frameworks have something about service worker and PWAs. And the first one, Create React App, it generates progressive web app by default. And all the um, uh, other command line interfaces for uh, other frameworks, they have a template or a corresponding flag allowing you to create uh, auto-generated service worker straight from the beginning of your uh, applications live. Plus, there are some dedicated libraries. Um, I believe the most popular at the moment is this SW Precache and its uh, companion SW Toolbox. Next one is Workbox. We'll dedicate a separate slide to this one. And um, for Webpack, there is a really great offline plugin. Uh, Workbox, just a couple of words. It's a module-based library to both generate and extend our own service worker. Um, in addition to this uh, quite rich functionality, it has some um, really killer feature, at least, at least for me. You can write your own service worker, your own code, and extend it by using some uh, 
some modules from the workbox. For, for example, for caching, for example, for background sync. All other tools, they generate service worker for you. So you kind of don't have control. So each time you build your application or each time you generate the service worker, all your code is gone, right? You have the possibility to extend this generated service worker, for example, uh, via import scripts, but uh, you know, for, for me this, uh, this flow looks a bit strange. Um, service worker is an uh, important part of your application and it really makes sense to keep full control on it. Testing service workers is service worker is non-trivial action. Um, first, uh, it uh, produces side effects uh, by firing this uh, add event listener um, events. And um, the whole environment is totally different from the regular web, right? It's totally different contact. This is why I would like to recommend you to have a look at service worker mock library developed by Pinterest company. What it does, it just emulates service worker environment in uh, Node.js for you to, to test it. Uh, and uh, in addition, it exposes some uh, useful um, helping methods. I really strongly um, recommend you to have a look at this just to avoid these unexpected errors, despite you know how to implement kill switch now, right? Um, good, uh, let's get rest from code samples and talk about UX a bit, about user experience. Push notifications, super powerful feature. Um, we can reach out our users like at a scale, but it's really easy to misuse these um, possibilities. Uh, let's have a look at um, like random website. Um, you know that push flow contains two separate actions. First, user subscribes to these uh, push notifications and a totally separate action when we send notification itself, right? And luckily, uh, before um, real subscribing, the browser will um, expose this native dialogue, like confirmation. Do you really wish to subscribe to uh, notifications from these specific websites? And this, um, Dialogue looks like this, so show notifications, yes, no, but what kind of notifications? What are you going to show me and uh, when? So most likely your user will just reject it. If, if it uh, will uh, be shown right after your, your, your user opened your, your web page, right? Like, like in this case. So um, how could we fix this? Um, first, there are some must-have rules. This um, native dialogue should be called only after explicit action from your user side. So do not, uh, you have the possibility you know, to fire this uh, pop-up straight after your application was loaded, but don't do this. Uh, give the user possibility to click on something uh, to show the interest, right? And unsubscription. Um, it's possible to unsubscribe from push notifications uh, inside um, like browser preferences, but uh, at the moment this uh, possibility is uh, not so uh, user friendly. You have j uh, just list of all your websites, so you have to scroll and search for this specific annoying website that uh, bothers you with uh, notifications. So rule of um, user experience have to have this um, checkbox or unsubscribe button visible. Um, yep. So let's have, uh, have a look at good examples. Web version of Slack. I bet you all have seen this dialog. And um, it looks quite good. It's uh, not so obtrusive, but visible at the moment. And it uh, explicitly asks you do you wish to subscribe to these notifications? And um, mm, yeah, after user click this link, this native dialog will appear. Um, example from Pinterest. Also, nice switch, and you have to click it explicitly before this uh, native dialog will be fired. And to be objective, um, here is the sample from the site I mentioned uh, from, from the beginning with the like wrong uh, subscription flow. Uh, 
unsubscription, which is uh, inside your user account, is done properly, right? And you can even uh, subscribe and subscribe to like different channels. So no problems with this. Also, uh, you can uh, notice different uh, um, in interesting uh, fact here. Um, in Slack, it's called desktop notifications. In the Pinterest browser notifications, in the product hunt browser push, why? Why different names for the same feature? Uh, I believe it's because of it's relatively new and uh, there is no well well established uh, terminology yet. Maybe uh, later we'll get something more common. So uh, let's uh, talk about notifications themselves. First, try to avoid notifications, really. Uh, think about uh, each notification you show to your user as uh, about pop-up. And uh, just uh, recall from your memory these um, awful times uh, in uh, pre-pop-up uh, blockers era. Use this channel, notifications, uh, only for something really critical, I'd say. And second, uh, it's Again, don't uh, show the same information to all your users uh, until they explicitly sign for I want to, uh, sub to be subscribed for, for everything. Please keep this channel for very personal and uh, very just-in-time uh, announcements. Um, let's prototype uh, our uh, notification. Uh, imagine we have... Uh, Air company, and we're so excited uh, to have uh, our website as a progressive web application. And we uh, set up push notifications for our users, and we can um, catch um, available uh, availability for check in. And we want to notice our users uh, um, with these facts. So, first, we always have a browser uh, icon or logo type on notification, it just reminds a uh, user from where this hmm, pop-up uh, appeared because, you know, notifications, the power of notifications, they, they can uh, be shown even uh, if your web page is closed and even when your browser is closed, right? Not unloaded from memory, but, but closed. Uh, okay, so what we could have here? Our company name, right? Yeah, we are proud of our company. Uh, we definitely want to notice user, no, notify user, yes, uh, check your, you can check in now. Uh, also, we have the possibility to entertain user with our beautiful logo type, right? Uh, plus, uh, each notification will have uh, origin uh, from where it came from. A again, for user to be able to understand who sends this notification. It's also a system and uh, obligatory part of um, notification, so we don't have control over this. So, looks beautiful, right? Useful? No. Let's uh, rethink a bit. And let's uh, use all the info uh, we have. And, um, okay, user uh, host name is still here. So user can understand uh, where it comes from, right? Uh, so no need to repeat our company name in title. We can use title for more uh, critical information. For example, uh, the route of flight itself. Also, um, as a message, as a content of a notification, let's use something uh, asking user to do some action, right? We don't want to just uh, notify uh, user about something. We wish uh, each notification to be useful. So why not to just uh, explicitly ask, uh, click here to if you wish to check in now. And we could be very creative and use this image to expose some some extra information, right? So we can like generate this image and show more content. So, um, for the content, we have uh, following rules. No need to repeat uh, information um, in different fields, right? Like, like the company name. Uh, the size of notification is uh, very limited, so we have to use it very smartly. Uh, instead of notifying user about something happened, send them actual information. And also, uh, it makes sense to provide call for action. 
uh, last fast five minutes uh, for uh, upcoming features. Um, they are not so mature yet, but soon we'll get the privilege to use this. Periodic sync. Um, just imagine that we have Chrome in our browser. It sounds really uh, risky, right? So we can uh, um, do some, you know, bad operations uh, in background. Uh, this is why it requires explicit user permission, like uh, this dialogue uh, before subscribing to push notifications. But for us, for developers, no need to set up anything on server. It's pure client side. Important uh, point here is uh, browser is the final uh, like uh, party deciding to fire this event or not. So we can't guarantee that everything we planned will happen. And uh, code-wise, it could like look something like this. Um, uh, we register this sync, and we could pass some extra information, like it should not be fired when user on cellular connection or uh, their device is not uh, charging. And um, in our code, we have this, in Service Worker, we have this event, we can listen and do some actions. But um, yes, important thing to remember that uh, it's browser uh, which decides the, 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 which had the final decision, despite we have some like past extra options. And uh, next, uh, really interesting feature is foreign fetch. You remember when we uh, mm, discussed remote uh, requests, like requests for to the different origins, I mentioned that <coughs> this CDN can deliver its own service worker. It looks uh, uh, like it's super suitable feature for uh, these guys, um, for uh, a external APIs, for content delivery networks, for different image storage, and for analytics, right? Uh, so it works like uh, like magic. It intercepts uh, requests <coughs> not from your website.com, but from other ones. Uh, just imagine you downloaded font from some uh, font <coughs> uh, CDN, and it's located in common storage inside your browser, and all other sites uh, could, uh, could use this uh, resource. So it even makes <coughs> your users' um, life better, sorry. Plus, it's all magically available offline, like uh, regular offline cache. Uh, Okay, how <coughs> we could uh, implement this? You remember that we just um, requested font. We don't have the privilege to ask to user, please go to this <coughs> index.html page of our CDN and uh, then we will install service worker. No, user just asked for one file, one font. Magic, we can install service worker using HTTP headers. It's just a really experimental way but it opens really great possibilities. And then in our service worker, we can <coughs> install and uh, using foreign fetch event, uh, do all this magic with uh, different uh, responses to different requests. Sounds really cool. Um, for now, this is under resyncing, under um, updating the specification, but it's uh, Hopefully, uh, sooner or later, we'll get this really interesting uh, feature. Last point from me, go to this URL and <coughs> join Slack team. I organize uh, especially for sharing knowledge and experience about service workers. This is just open Slack team. And uh, we are <coughs> 700 plus developers there and representatives from all major browsers, frameworks, libraries, are waiting for you. Thank you very much. <laughs>